On July 30, 2025, an extraordinary magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake struck off Russia's far eastern Kamchatka Peninsula, and within days, seven volcanoes erupted in a rare parade of eruptions. Now, halfway across the Pacific, the archipelago of the Philippines is exhibiting eerily similar signs. Powerful earthquakes rattling its islands, and volcanoes simmering with renewed unrest. From the devastating 6.9 magnitude quake that rocked Cebu in September 2025, to the twin tremors off Davao Oriental in October, that rattled Mindanao and triggered tsunami warnings, the archipelago has been gripped by seismic chaos. Almost immediately after, volcanic systems such as Tal and Kan Laon began rumbling, releasing ash, steam, and volcanic earthquakes of their own. For many Filipinos, it felt as if the country itself had begun to wake up from a long, dangerous sleep. But are these events truly connected? Are the quakes beneath the seafloor stirring the magma beneath the mountains? Or are these coincidences in a naturally hyperactive region? To understand what's really happening, one must look beneath the surface to the unseen geological forces that tie the fate of the islands together. Join us today as we delve into the heart of the unfolding disaster in the Philippines. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Few places on Earth experience such a complex interplay of tectonic forces as the Philippines. The archipelago sits at the intersection of not one, but four major tectonic plates. The Pacific Plate, Philippine Sea Plate, Eurasian Plate, and Sunda Plate. These vast slabs of rock move only centimeters each year. But where they meet, the consequences are immense. To the east, the Philippine Trench marks the boundary where the enormous Pacific Plate subducts beneath the smaller Philippine Sea Plate. This trench, plunging more than 10,000 meters below sea level, is one of the deepest parts of the ocean and a primary source of the region's most powerful earthquakes. Meanwhile, to the west, the Manila Trench runs parallel to Luzon and the South China Sea, where the Sunda Plate slides beneath the Philippine Mobile Belt. This dual subduction system has fractured the Philippine archipelago into a mosaic of microplates, faults, and volcanic arcs the Philippine fault zone out, a massive tear that cuts the country from north to south, accommodates much of the lateral motion between these converging plates. This fault and its numerous branches are responsible for many of the nation's deadliest earthquakes. The same subduction that causes these quakes also fuels the country's volcanoes. As one plate sinks beneath another, water-rich sediments melt the mantle above forming magma that rises to the surface. Over millions of years, this process has created more than 20 active volcanoes, a fiery chain that mirrors the country's seismic scars. Thus, earthquakes and eruptions are not isolated phenomena. They are different expressions of the same deep, ongoing tectonic story. On the night of September 30th, 2025, the people of northern Cebu were jolted awake by one of the most destructive earthquakes in the island's history. Measuring around magnitude 6.9, the quake struck off the coast near Bogo Bay, an area previously considered seismically quiet. The ground shook violently for several seconds, toppling homes, splitting roads, and sending panic through the region. By dawn, the scale of devastation was clear. Entire communities were flattened, churches and schools lay in ruins, and rescuers dug through debris searching for survivors. The death toll climbed to nearly 80 people, with over a thousand injured and tens of thousands displaced. Over 12,000 aftershocks rippled through the region in the weeks that followed, further destabilizing the ground and stoking fears of another major event. Barely 10 days after Cebu's disaster, another seismic catastrophe struck. This time in Mindanao, the southernmost major island of the Philippines. In the early hours of October 10, 2025, residents of Davao Oriental and nearby provinces were jolted by a magnitude 7.4 earthquake offshore. Barely half an hour later, a second, slightly weaker quake followed, forming what geologists call a seismic doublet. 
These twin quakes triggered widespread panic and prompted tsunami warnings across the eastern coast. Landslides blocked highways, homes crumbled, and several coastal communities suffered severe damage. For weeks, the earth beneath Philippines seemed to tremble without rest, and the sense of anxiety only deepened when reports emerged of volcanic unrest soon after. By late October, the focus of national concern had shifted from the sea to the land, specifically to the country's most volatile volcanoes. On October 26, Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology reported an unusual spike in the activity at Tall Volcano just south of Manila. Within 24 hours, the agency recorded 33 volcanic earthquakes and three short-lived phreatic eruptions, steam-driven blasts that sent plumes of ash hundreds of meters into the air. Tall's crater lake turned murky and emitted thick sulfuric steam while nearby residents complained of a sharp smell of gas and light ashfall. Although Favox maintained Alert Level 1, the sudden surge of activity, after weeks of quiet, raised concerns that it might once again be building toward a larger eruption. At the same time, seismic sensors detected renewed volcanic earthquakes beneath Canleon Volcano on Negros Island, the same island where the devastating Cebu quake had struck weeks earlier. Canlaon had already erupted multiple times over the past two years, including a major explosion in April 2025 that sent ash five kilometers into the sky. The new tremors indicated that magma might be moving again beneath the mountain. In scientific terms, the relationship between earthquakes and volcanic eruptions is complex. Part coincidence, part cause and effect. Both phenomena originate from the same tectonic forces, yet they operate on different layers of the Earth's system. An earthquake occurs when accumulated stress along a fault suddenly releases, sending shockwaves through the crust. A volcanic eruption, on the other hand, happens when magma pressure within a chamber exceeds the strength of the rock above it. In most cases, one does not directly cause the other. However, large earthquakes can disturb nearby volcanic systems in several ways. Firstly, Strong seismic waves can alter stress fields around magma reservoirs. A powerful quake can slightly change the pressure within a volcano, either sealing its conduits or opening new fractures that allow magma to rise. Secondly, shaking can mobilize magmatic fluids that are already near the surface. If a volcano is already primed to erupt, even a modest perturbation could act as the final trigger. In the Philippines case, Scientists suggest that while the recent earthquakes and volcanic unrest occur in the same time frame, the connection is indirect, both driven by the same tectonic energy release, but not necessarily one causing the other. Yet, the line between influence and coincidence remains blurred in such an active region. While scientists hesitate to use the phrase earthquakes triggering volcanic eruptions, the concept of seismic volcanic coupling is gaining attention. Studies show that about half of all major volcanic eruptions occur within six months of a nearby large earthquake. However, correlation does not imply causation. The key factor is whether the volcano was already in a state of unrest. In other words, an earthquake can act like a final nudge. If magma is already rising, if pressure is already high, a strong quake might help open a pathway or release trapped gases. But if the magma system is dormant, no amount of shaking will make it erupt. In the Philippines, this delicate balance is constantly in play, with more than 300 volcanoes with 24 active and hundreds of active faults. It's almost inevitable that one event will affect another, even indirectly. This interplay makes forecasting doubly difficult. Monitoring agencies must track not only seismic activity, but also gas emissions ground deformation, temperature changes, and chemical signals. An enormous challenge for an archipelago spread across thousands of islands. The connection between earthquakes and eruptions may not always be linear, but their coexistence tells a story of deep planetary motion, one that continues to shape, test, and define the Filipino nation. Looking ahead, Scientists warn that the Philippines will likely face stronger and more frequent seismic events in the coming decades. Population growth, 
urban expansion, and climate-related hazards compound the risks. But with every quake and eruption, the country gains more data, more insight, and more determination. Fivolex continues to map undiscovered faults, install new seismometers, and use satellite technology to detect ground deformation in near real time. International collaborations have also improved tsunami detection and volcanic gas monitoring. While it's impossible to prevent natural disasters, it is possible to anticipate them and minimize their impact through preparedness and science. For the global community, the Philippines serves as both a warning and a model. It demonstrates how tectonic beauty and danger coexist, and how nations can adapt to the rhythms of an unstable planet.